Hello everybody, this is a Sigma AEC micro training and this is on making a grid of diffusers. So here we go. First thing that we're going to do for this workflow is make a space. And we kind of want to make a space that's not a perfect square or a perfect rectangle. And you want to make sure that's bounded because we're actually going to be relying on the space geometry. So now we can hide them to Dynamo. So the goal of this script is to place a grid of diffusers. So first let's look at that end goal by looking at what nodes we'd be using. So here we have a node that places a family type at a designated point. So we can get the family type pretty easy by using the family type node, which is a drop down to select any family type within the project. We can scroll down to get one of our diffuser families and connect this to the family type input. Now the question is how to get the points. So let's group this and then go back to the start of the problem. So to do this, we need to get certain inputs. Here we'll get the categories node and scroll down to get all the spaces in the project. To get all the space in the project, we need to use the all elements of category node. So now that we have our category, we'll connect that into the all elements of category node. And now we have a list of spaces, except I didn't add a space. So now let's go back to here, add one space, hop back into our Dynamo workflow. And now you can see that one space shows up. So the next goal here is to get the bottom surface of the space. To do that, we'll get all the elements, or all the faces of the element. You could get the solid of the element. But we can skip a step by just getting the faces of the element. As you can see, it looks the same in the 3D Revit preview except now we have a sublist of spaces and not a sublist of one solid. We now want to find the orientation of the surfaces to find the top surface of the space. To do this, we'll use the surface normal at parameter node. This node will give you a normal vector or a vector that you can is perpendicular to the surface at a designated spot based on the UV parameter. Here we'll just leave it at the default zero. Now we want to check the Z component of this vector. The top surface will have a Z component of one. So now we need a way to go through this list and find but first we'll round this vector's components. You can see that some of these are really, really small numbers. This is due to the precision settings of Dynamo. To get those all to zero, we'll just add them. We'll use the round, math round node. We can now check to find the surface with the normal that is equal, the Z component of the normal is equal to one. Here we use the equal equals as a test and get a list of Boolean values out. You can see that the first item in the sublist is true, meaning that this is the value, or this is the surface that is the top surface. We'll use the filter by Boolean mask to filter all the surfaces by this true or false Boolean input. <coughs> so here we feed in our true and false sublist. and our list of surfaces. 
the output is our in and out. In represents the true value, in this case, the one surface that is the top surface. We can visually see this by hiding all the elements. If you have the data shapes package, then you can use this tool to hide all the elements very quickly. Now, if we just unhide this output, we can see that we have our top surface there with all the other surfaces gone. Real quick, we can also see all the other surfaces that are coming out of the out output or the false output every surface but the top surface. So now we flatten this list just to make sure that we have one surface for every space. And now we can group this section together and call it get top surface. The next step in this process is now to get a grid of points on these top surfaces. Remember, this grid of points will be our points for placing the diffusers at the end of the script. So again, we'll feed it in our surface. And again, we have this parameter value, are these UV inputs. So the UV inputs corresponds to a location on the surface. UV is like X and Y but for this particular surface. By putting 0.5 for both, you can see that we have a point directly in the middle. To make a grid of points, we first want to get a series. So we can make a series by going 0, dot, dot, by linking elements together with a comma. So here we have 0, 0 0.5, and 1. And by setting the lacing to longest, you can see that we have of points on our surface. This works, but we have no control over the gap or the spacing. So we must take another step before we can make this grid of points. And that is we need to figure out the number of divisions in the U and the B direction. First, we'll offset the surface to eliminate points sitting on the line or sitting on the boundary of the space. You wouldn't want a diffuser sitting on the wall. To do this, we use the surface parameter curves and then join these curves into a poly surface. We can offset a poly surface. curve offset node. We have a distance and we have an option to round it. This will just leave blank as the default is no or set it to false because we don't want it rounded. We now have put negative to have this come inward. So this is what we want except we want the user to have control over this input. So we'll add a slider set the limits. We'll say the maximum throw or gap will be 20 feet and the minimum will be 8 feet and we'll check in steps of 1. We can rename this now to be throw and even set it as an input. The throw when it comes to diffusers is a radius or a diameter and now we really want the radius to be that gap. So therefore, the throw will butt right up against the wall. You can see that we can now move the slider around based on our throw to get the input. We now want to re reconstruct a surface out of these curve lines. To do that, we'll use surface by patch and 
connect our offset curves, poly curve, into the surface by patch node. Again, we can hide everything and see what the surface looks like. We can now group this and call it get offset surface. Now see that we have the surface and again we have these grid points but we still haven't taken consideration in for the number of divisions based on our gap value. To do that we'll use the node surface get isoline. So this has three inputs the surface, the direction, 0 equals the u direction and 1 equals the v direction. We can get both directions by making a list and feed it into the iso direction. We also then have the parameter. So these can be both set at 0, but just to demonstrate, you can see how this moves around and it's based on the percent are the number between 1 and 0 based on its position. Our goal of using these lines is just to get their distance. So again, we'll set this to a default value of 0. We then want to find out how long each of these curves is. To do that, we'll get curve length node. Now we have the distance for each of the surface edges. We now want to divide this number by our gap. This will give us the number of divisions, except the one last step that we have to do is around this. We can't have a percent of a division. So we use the math ceiling node to round the number up to the next increment, our whole number. We now know our divisions for the number of divisions needed for each surface. We can transpose this to isolate the U and the V components into separate lists. We'll then clean this up, group them together, and call this get divisions. We start off by getting the x and y values. To do this, we'll use a shorthand design script to get the item in the zero index and at the zero sublist. This gives us our x value. We want to do the same thing but in the first index to get our y value, our u and our v value. As you can see, we're not quite there yet. We now need to make a series. So again, remember U and V's go from zero to one. So we make a series going from zero to a number with zero dot dot number, in this case five. Again, we want to go to zero one, but we want to do it in increments based on the number of divisions. So now we can sub this out to get the number of divisions needed associated parameters for each surface in each direction. Now you can see that we have this grid of points on the surfaces. Notice that we didn't draw a nice rectangle surface. This is why I did not want to draw a nice rectangle surface. There's one more thing that we have to do in order to make sure that we get points that are on the surface. Again note that this has to be set to lacing as well. 
So now let's look at removing these four points that do not lie on the surface. To do this, we'll use geometry intersection. So we'll take our surface and we'll check if our points actually intersect. Again, we'll go to cross lacing to make sure every point is checked with the surface. To simplify this process and the lacing, we can go ahead and flatten the list of points and change it to lacing. So now we have one list of points for each surface rather than sublists. Going in, we can see that we have empty lists. These are the points that do not lie on the surface. We can actually switch this geometry intersect node for a better node in the situation, which just gives a true or false value on if there is an intersection or not. We can now filter out these points with the list filter by Boolean mask node. Take our list of true and false values and our list of surfaces our list of points rather and find the points and remove the points that do not fit on the surface. We now have a grid of points on the top surfaces of the space that now can be fed into our family place. family instance by points node. We can see the geometry here in Dynamo. And of course, we can hop back into Revit and check out the geometry. Here's the geometry in Dynamo with the actual space geometry. So as you can see, we now have a grid of points set up. And they can even be moved parametrically inside of our space. Thanks for watching and you can always find more micro trains at sigmaec.com. Bye.